channel. Today, we will still continue with chapter 5, Work, Energy and Power. So in this video, I will give you the summary for the energy and constellations of energy. Okay, so let's start. In an isolated system or in a closed system, the total energy of the system is constant. So we can write it as the total initial energy is equal to total final energy. Okay, so if this is an isolated system, when the net force equals to zero, the energy in the system is constant, meaning that the initial energy will equal to the final total energy. Next, mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the sum. Okay, it's the total of kinetic energy and also potential energy in an object that is used to do work. Okay, so we go to the first one, kinetic energy. So usually kinetic energy is the energy of the body due to its motion. Okay, so when there's the motion, there will be a kinetic energy. So what is the equations for kinetic energy? Still remember? Yes, uh, it's K equals to half NV square where M is the mass of the body, V is the speed of the body. Okay, so this is the kinetic energy. Okay, next, let us continue with the potential energy. So here potential energy, we have two types of potential energy. The first one is the gravitational potential energy. And the second one is the elastic potential energy. Okay, so we look at the first one first, where gravitational energy is defined as the energy stored in a body of a system because of its position. So we can write the equations U, the potential energy, equals to MGH. Okay, so M is the mass, G is the gravitational acceleration, H is the height. So it depends on the position. So when H, when you at the high position, H is higher, the gravitational potential is greater. Okay, next one is the elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy is defined as the energy stored in an elastic material as the result of their stretching or compressing. Okay, so usually it is in the elastic material, for example, swing a spring. Okay, so the equations we can write as U equals to half kx squared or we can write it as half fx. Okay, because we know that the relationship between the k and also f is our f is equals to kx. Okay, so either you write the elastic potential energy as half kx squared or you can write it as half fx okay where f is the the restoring force k is the spring constant x is the extension of compression okay Hooke's law Hooke's law state that the restoring force f of a spring is directly proportional to the amount of the stretch or the compression meaning that if let's say uh, we stretch meaning is extension if let's say compression uh, is a uh, meaning that the length is shortened. Okay, so it's either it's extension or elongation as long as there is a changing of the x. Uh. So x in if the limit of the proportionality is not exit. Okay, so our f is directly proportional to the negative x. Uh. So, or we can write it as f equals to negative kx. So actually negative here shows that the directions of the force is always opposed to the directions of x okay because this is a restoring force so therefore f here meaning that is the restoring force and the restoring force direction is always opposed the directions of the x so for the spring we can find the potential energy if they give you f versus x graph okay so we know that the area below the graph is actually work done okay so this is the area under the graph okay area under the graph so an area under the graph meaning that the work done to stretch or to compress the spring okay so next one we will continue with the conservations of mechanical energy so as we know mechanical energy here is a total of 
potential energy and also kinetic energy in an isolated system in an isolated system meaning in a closed system the total mechanical energy E of the system is always constant meaning that our K initial plus U initial will equal to K final plus U final okay because we know that the energy the mechanical energy here is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy okay so in the image on the left okay here this is the image the total mechanical energy at any point is equals to e equals to k plus u so for example let's say at y at the uh, when t equals to zero okay when t equals to zero when the, at the first position the potential energy is maximum okay so at here your u is maximum but at that moment, k is equal to 0 because there is no motion. Okay, there is no motion. And at that moment, it is at the highest position, meaning that your U is maximum. But at that moment, kinetic energy is equal to 0. Okay, so at the second position is, if let's say halfway, meaning that the potential energy, it will reduce. And at that moment, the kinetic energy will increase. Okay, will increase. And finally, when it reached the ground, when it reached the ground, just before it reached the ground, okay, because that moment height is equal to zero. So potential energy at that moment will equal to zero, and all the potential energy already convert to kinetic energy, and at that moment kinetic energy is maximum. Okay, so if K1, U1, K2, U2 are kinetic energy and potential energy at two different locations, one meaning that at initial and 2 is at final position so the conservation of mechanical energy leads to the following mathematical expression okay where we have the initial half mv square plus mgh equals to half mv square plus mgh final okay so at any position also we can use these equations to find the value that you want Okay, so this is the case where there's no frictional force involved, meaning that this is a ideal case where there is no there's no work done to overcome the friction. Okay, next one is the conservation of energy with the dissipated force. So, so meaning that there is a frictional force. So there is a frictional force that we need to overcome. Okay, so we need to do work to overcome the frictional force. So dissipated forces such as friction, air resistance, push or pull by a person, and etc. do not conserve mechanical energy. However, when these forces are taken into account, the total energy is still conserved. Okay? Meaning that initially we have the total energy, the, the mechanical energy is kinetic energy plus potential energy. But when it comes to... Uh, we need to overcome the frictional force. Okay, there's a dissipative force. We need to add in the work done to overcome the frictional force. Okay, so usually this work done to overcome the frictional force is equal to okay, work done equation is F X, uh, where F here we are referring to the frictional force times the displacement. Cause. Of course, usually frictional force is opposed the motion. So it usually is cos 180 yeah, because the motion and uh, the directions of the frictional force is always opposed. Okay, so if S is in direction, your frictional force will opposite direction. So the angle will always equal to 180 uh, degree. Okay, and the rest one will equal to the final. Okay, so for example, let's say uh, initial potential energy plus kinetic energy, for example, 50 plus 50, for example. So actually total should be 100. Okay, but because there is a frictional force uh, that we need to overcome, okay, we need to do work to overcome the friction. Maybe it would take around, let's say, uh, 10, okay, 10 uh, joule. So we need to... Uh, here, if let's say here is uh, okay, 5 plus 2 for, uh, times 2 cos 180 
So therefore, negative 10 Joule. Okay, so we must minus negative 10 Joule, meaning that this negative 10 Joule is actually to overcome the uh, loss. So it's actually it's an energy loss. Okay, so finally, the final, uh, final energy that left only equals to 90 Joule only. Okay, so why only left 90? Because we need to do use a 10 Joule to overcome the uh, frictional force. Okay, so that's all for this summary. We will uh, discuss the exercise in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.